Hey everyone, this is uh, Black Woman 7 here, and uh, welcome to our uh, BFA Season 9 team analysis slash breakdown. Now, traditionally, people would try to have these videos up early, probably earlier than usual. However, with, given with my case, uh, we're already in playoffs, so, um, and I wasn't able to upload for like a good two months prior, like I think, I didn't do anything at all like in July and August, maybe like upload like the uh, playoffs for PFA uh, season 8, but that's about it. And September was kind of quiet as well, so, um, so, uh, to make it up for you guys, I'm pretty much gonna like be going over my uh, PFA season 9 uh, team, so, um, one thing I will say is I'll add all the changes that I've made. I'll include all the FAs. As you see, there's like plenty already. So, um, so just give you guys a good background information. Uh, league started around July. And, uh, basically we have like, I think about 12 people. And, uh, with this, uh, season, uh, Z moves are banned to kind of reflect that. There's not going to be any Z moves in uh, Gen uh, 8, so even though Dynamax moves might replace that, so um, either way, um, I do want to stress that some Pokemon are, or will be like, some Pokemon's viabilities will be changed depending on the fact that whether they have a Z move or not. So the fact that in this league, um, they don't have certain, certain or, well not, well, basically, no Pokemon has a Z move, so that will affect the viability of these guys. So, yeah. So, um, I'm not gonna go over like you know individual Pokemon, how they, their performance, their roles, and whatnot. They're pro that's probably like you know something that every like uh, team analysis has done. You know, um, but I'm just gonna go over like what I wanted each Pokemon to do. Like you know, I'm not gonna go over like oh Garchomp gets EQ or something. Um. Like, or Forge gets Moonblast, or Sweeping gets Skull. I mean, no, I'm not gonna do that, so I'm just gonna like go over like, you know, specific roles I was looking for for each Pokemon each team, for the team that I had. So I, I hope this is sort of like diff something different that, I, that, you know, we can go, that I could like, like provide. So, respected too. So, all right, so without further ado, here's my, here's the team that I drafted. Um, the first team I drafted, uh, I would think I was like last in the draft because I did win PFA uh, Season 8. Uh, that's a slight spoiler, so yeah. So the first Pokemon I drafted, which basically was a wheel pick, was Tapu Koko and Garchomp. Yes, Tapu Koko and Garchomp fell to me, so I know. And as you can see, uh, I mean Garchomp and Tapu Koko have just amazing like offensive like pairing together and this is something I kind of wanted to base this team around as well as with like uh, the next two Pokemon Lorgis and Suicune I wanted to have like a more bulkier defensive core in this case to fill up my offensive core as well so though so Garchomp could also play a, def a defensive role at times I said with, same way with Coco um since it does have access to like Roost and Defog so Lorgis, originally I drafted this uh, gal because uh, it also has access to Sinithis, Defog, and I could spam, you know, Moonblast with ease. Um, I think someone sniped me of Sylveon, <laughs> but I was like, alright, because I think I was either going to pick Lorgis or the uh, Floyd Eternal. We did allow some Pokemon to be legal in this point for this like season, since it's very likely Floyd Eternal is going to get shafted <laughs> by Game Freak, so R.I.P. And also all the other legendaries and megas, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just wanted like to have a forge just to have a cleric. So basically, Suicune. I mean, you want to have that utilitarian like like um bulky water. Um, I wanted to have like a Pokemon that could just take like hits, especially with its high defenses. Of course, you know, combine and whatnot. So. It, 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 and this using Suicune with Coco is a little bit trickier because I can't run rest, but if if it allows for it, I can. So, um, 
Ferrothorn. Then I tried like drafting like for like you know more hazard control with Ferrothorn, Crobat, Mad Spirit, and Drapion, as you can see. And uh, I think I dropped Ferrothorn just because uh, I just didn't like it. The fact that it was way too passive, you know. Um, and the fact that he relied too much on leftovers, lead seed, and even protect to a degree. So, um, he does have access to spikes, which even then, like, it, it, it's just the cost for Furl Thorn. I think it was tier A, and I just didn't want to keep it. So, as you'll see in the later on, like, I, I kind of wanted to get a Pokemon that was like, like more better value. So, um, Crobat, um, I think Crobat, I, I ended up replacing this guy because. E fog, yes, um, it does have E fog, but and I have used Crobat to some degree to success, success here and there, but I think it kind of competes with Coco too much, as well as with Drapion, so that's why I ended up dropping it later on, as you'll see. Um, it's a good flying type, and I do recommend it, but at times I just think in this case it's just it conflicts it too much to Coco. Mesprit was like a good psychic type I had for a while. At just being able to have access to rocks, U-turn. It's sort of like having a Mew for budget pick, but you know, um, I just didn't want to like. Uh, eventually, I did re end up replacing like. Honestly, I think I ended up replacing like half the teams. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, <laughs> I ended up replacing half of it. So, yeah. If you want to know why I did that, um, basically in the season. It was like we did, we were like uh, able to change like he like Pokemon like frequently because there was like a I think it was like there was like a new rule change like in the middle of the season where we could like just drop any Pokemon. Of course, this was curbed a bit so where it was only for a certain day and no at a certain time. But even still, people did like make a lot of changes, so I did take advantage of this. And not only that, you couldn't use the Pokemon for the following week, so... Or... You couldn't use it within that same week, at least, so... So you had to, like, kind of, like, announce it. So, well... So. But I think that's the whole point of FAs, so... I think that was, like, the reason why, like, we just kind of, like... We kind of did it just for, like, just to... For fun, I guess. But, like, I think everyone... I think everyone did benefit from this, like, everyone changed their teams like significantly throughout the season so it's not like just me that benefited from it it's just like others as well so using different pokemon seeing what works what doesn't work so so yeah like drapion like as i mentioned it ha i had t-spikes potential but it's kind of meh and like we have pyroar which was a good like low tier pick for like tiers but then again i just decided you know like, I didn't like it after a while. Like, especially, like, for the Pokemon I eventually ended up taking on, uh, replacing this guy. And same with Girder. Like, um, Girder wasn't as, like, coveted early on in this team. Eventually, I replaced it with Tangela and this, this guy with Sil Valley. And lastly, Gallade. I mean, I used this, I think I drafted Gallade, like, first this season before, uh, I, I think I had, like, the draft for PFA before the you know the email draft tour like um, I think a month, at least a month before so and uh, to be honest I kind of wanted to utilize Gallade back then because I, I it was like one of the only megas I, I on my bucket list to try before you know Gen 8 starts so yeah its coverage options are just pretty spectacular you know elemental punches knockoff leaf blade bulk up uh, SD has a bunch of status options. You even have, well, you have the option of either going for close combat for damage or dream punch for recovery. So yeah, like its ability, it's not justified. It's just like inner focus, but it does have justified. You could just take advantage of getting out of dark type, you know, take advantage of dark types and get like a special, a special attack, but like an attack raise. So yeah. So, I'm just go over my team. So. Um, the first changes I made was around week three and week four. This was like the, the during this time I just tried to uh, like change this team around significantly. So 
the first major seekup was like dropping Pearl Thorn, which I think cost like 180 points for Volcani, which is 120. So this is like a standard you know GBA style draft. So honestly, I think this was like probably the weirdest FA, and it, it this honestly was unnecessary because I was debated between Volcanian and Voltress. Which I ended up changing. And to be honest, like like Volcanion was just like um it's a good bulky water pivot, but I already have that, but like, you know, sweet tooth. Like the idea was having like a like a very strong like fire fire type since like I think at the time I noticed a lot of teams had like strong fire type Pokemon that that well, Pyroar, let's just say I just didn't like the fact that I have Pyroar. Like, teams have Char X, Char Y, Infernape, Teeny. And I felt like I was I need to upgrade my fire type slot, so yeah. But I ended up, I ended up like changing this guy last, the next following week because I just was kind of disappointed with it, so. Um, next, anyways, I paused the video for a bit, so. The next Pokemon I ended up like. Placing was a girder for Tangela. This is for my E2 pick. And honestly, it's pretty self explained I just wanted to pivot for a girder. You know, one that was like a good grass type since I dropped Pearl Thorn. And there's not really much to say since it's a good regen Pokemon. I would Violite and it makes and since it's it, you're using a Violite instead of A V, you have access to knock off leash sheets and like you know status options as well. So moving on. Um, Sil Valley, I think I kept Sil Valley up to like playoffs. Now I heard last week, and even then I decided to drop it. But um, I think the reason why I kept it for most of the season was because it had access to Defog, Parting Shot, and for that reason alone, like being able to Parting Shot and like lower the opponent's uh, attack and special attack is pretty strong if you think about it. Um, the fact that it could change to any type you want with the the memories is pretty fantastic. So even if I, let's say, I want a ghost type, I could get Ghost Silver Alley. Or if I want a fire type that's not Moltres, I could get a Fire Silver Alley, you know? Um, basically, that's pretty much the idea. So Then I had, like, Moltres. Um, I think I replaced this with Drapion. Mostly because, like, I, this was like a D tier pick. And to be honest, uh, like, Moltres for a D tier is just fantastic. Being able to spam, like, Hurricane, Flamethrower, I guess it's weak to rocks, but it's just a very strong Pokemon, especially for, like, a legendary. Alright, so, the next Pokemon we have is uh, Gliscor, so. Um. Honestly, I'm not even going to talk about Gliscor because even though, you know, Poison Heal, Flash, Pokey Pivot, um, I didn't even keep Gliscor for a, at all, really. Like, I eventually changed Gliscor for Scizor. It wasn't even like an FA pick, because I, I think I changed the, the Gliscor for like Scizor, because I realized, oh look, Scizor is available. So, um, eventually, I think someone dropped it, like, and that's why I just got it immediately, because I knew like, tier B Scizor was just something I wanted to use. I mean, Scizor, pairing Scizor with Coco and, like, uh, Sil Valley, Moltres, um, as you see, well, you see the Sylveon, but, like, being able to have a good full turn core it was pretty much one of the more, one of the top priorities I wanted. And I think it was, like, pretty strong having, like, access to, like, both Scizor and, uh, Sil Valley. Especially where like there's weeks where I could bring Steel, Steel Valley Steel or Steel Valley Dark or Ghost, and if I need a better, a, like you know, a different Steel type, I could just pick Steel Valley Steel. And Scizor, as we all know, can be like just a great offensive and defensive Pokemon in general. It has access to Defog. It has like it can it can pretty much be. It's probably one of the better U-Turners in the game, if not the best U-Turn Mon. Outside of Genesect, of course, but like, uh, even then, you have priority with Bullet Punch, Damnable Moves, U Turn, Knockoff, just like 
the set just pretty much built for itself if you think about it so yeah so i think the last major changes i made were around here with gate and playoffs but unicorn was like the last major pokemon i had on my like major change i had before the next set like and honestly, I think this was out of result of like wanting a better bulky ground, or not bulky ground, but more of a bulky ground, like a I mean poison type, and uh, pretty much another rock setter. And I noticed the Nita Queen was available, so I just took advantage and just added Nita Queen on my squad. Of course, uh, as we all know, that this thing has access to like pure force, like like boosted special hits, like ice beam. Power Sludge Wave, Flame Thor, Shadow Ball, just the main two. And of course it has great utility with uh, Dipper Fang, Rocks, E Spikes. And it's a good ground type to have just to, to just um or hazard setter as well because like you at least like limit Garchomp's usage of stealth rocks or I don't have to run rocks on Garchomp anymore, so yeah. And then these three picks are pretty much like, um, basically I would have viewed them as upgrades. Because, like, I just pretty much changed Floor just to Sylveon, um, Tangler to Rotom, and then, like, Mesprit for Misharna. So, I mean, Sylveon, I think the reason why I got it was just because it had better utility options and, like, Pixelate Hyper Voice mostly. The fact that you also heal up better when he wish because if it has a, high, a higher HP stat is also noted. So you just have, and also Pixelate can be, help you be both physical and special. Like, I mean, you can run Secret Power with uh, Sylveon and just paralyze stuff, or just run a physical Sylveon. I, I've seen people run physical Sylveon for some weird reason, you know, curse Sylveon with quick attack, screams out, you know? So that's something so basically just have a lot of options with this thing as well since it's an EV. um yeah next up we have is rotom and to be honest rotom was just one of those pokemon that i did not expect to add on this team especially in a certain week but i ended up getting this guy because since i dropped Borges, i might as well get another debugger and one that's a pivot so and also that I, I think at the time I didn't have a grass type if I if I lose to Angula, so I ended up getting Rotom. Mostly because it's just a good Pokemon to have in certain matchups if I need to use it over Coco. Especially with the grass typing, so yeah. And this as well as Levitate. It could handle most uh, ground types, if you ask me, so it has access to Leaf Spawn, um <laughs> Wisp, Toxic, Foul Play. Even though I didn't use it a lot, I don't think I used it at all in KCPL, I think. I still had some... I still, like, had some times where I, I Derrymon with this guy a little bit. Of course, like, people will use, like, the offensive sets, like, you know, the Choice Specs, Choice Scarf sets. But we'll see if I use it. Then the last Pokemon I got was, like, uh, Musharna, which was, like, a tier E pick. Or, like, a Tangela. In theory, because I think I swapped this for Tangela and then like wrote him for uh, a Mesprit, so yeah, I think Mesprit or like it was the one thing I didn't like about Mesprit was the lack of recovery outside of leftovers and Recycle Berry, so I ended up changing it for Musharna. And the thing with Musharna is that it has a very it their defenses are very comparable, of course. Like, Musharna doesn't have the move pool as, like, Mesprit has, you know, in terms of special and physical move pool. But Musharna at least has access to Combine, Dazzling Gleam, and even Heal Bell and Healing Wish. So I just felt that was just justified to, like, you know, you know, get this, to, like, get this Pokemon when it was available. And not only that, it has access to Synchronize and Fort Wound, which has abilities. They're really fantastic abilities, if you think about it, so yeah. Um, if there is anything I would say about Musharna, is that it is a very strong, sturdy Psychic type Pokemon that I just hope that kind of gets buffed in uh, Gen 
eight if it's available. So, um, I I do know that someone did sweep with this guy with a barrier calm mindset like in last season. So that's something that's like I've thought of. But then the last Pokemon I got, I think this was like just before playoffs. I think I replaced Sil Valley for Blissey. And this, I think this was just mainly because uh, I wanted another rocker and a special mon that could alleviate the role for Sylveon. And also the fact that this thing has access to Wish, so I could just abuse the Wish substitute, like Soft Boil. But also, I could also use Wish Protect if, as per normal, so it gives me the option of having to run either Sylveon or Sylveon or Blissey, so uh, that's great. So. Um, hopefully, I don't know if that by me the ass, but like even then, like uh, also this thing has rocks, and it can also learn Calm Mind, guys. So Calm Mind Blissey, that's fun. Or I could just run a Serene Grace Ice Beam. So yeah. Anyways, this is like the the final product if you ask me. So pretty much my dragon. Double fairy core with a steel type and a water type and a ground type and a lawnmower and a bird and a normal egg and a gladiator thing and a, I don't know what this is like an elephant like the Tonpaz Moonlight I don't know yeah that's pretty much about all I have to say about this guy that's pretty much a standard Nita Queen set if you ask me I don't know, like, wait, is this the set I ran for, you know, that's, that's the set I ran for, like, I believe, uh, um, bro, I think it was, I think this is the same one I ran for, like, playoffs for Epic. Still, um, that's pretty much it, I have to say, about this team. Um, pretty, like, strong and pretty much resembles what I wanted in terms of bulky offense, so, um, if anything, um, I'm kind of expecting, uh, or I'm, I'm expecting, uh, I don't know so sure what I'm expecting. Um, I could pretty much lose in like round one of playoffs, or I could like, like just make it to finals. I don't know. We'll see. But either way, I do like the fact that we did draft these two, Coco and Garchomp. Together, especially with Mega Gallade and Suicune, Scizor, so yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, that's all I have for this video. Just a quick uh, draft, like, polish, team breakdown of all the changes I've made, so. Uh, overall, I think, like, this team is pretty strong. Probably one of the stronger teams i made. Or, if, well, I'll admit that the... the I'll admit that the new FA rule probably, like, wasn't part of the that, but, you know, like, everyone had access to it, so, yeah. So, hopefully we'll see what how far this team goes. I just wanted to, like, like, the reason why, one thing I will say is that the reason why I wanted to include the FA changes is because, um, I just didn't want to, like, keep mentioning throughout the video, hey, I changed this Pokemon to this, or I changed this Pokemon to that. And I, I think you guys would just been like all confused as hell. No. So anyways, uh just just this is sort of like a heads up, you know. Eventually you might start seeing some of these Pokemon, so well anyways, uh that's all I have for today and uh I guess I'll see you guys next time.